Hey guys, Joe Pai here at Advanced Innovations. Welcome back to my shop. Today is the day I am going to assemble the Shaper. Seven months ago, I asked you guys which model you wanted to see built next, and it was overwhelming that the Shaper was the choice. Now, I knew nothing about this machine when I started to build it. I've never operated one, and actually, I've only been up close and personal with one one time, and it wasn't even turned on. But I can tell you, this is a pretty intense project. This particular 25 YouTube video series took six months to shoot and it needed 500, over 500 raw video segments to document the construction of all of these pieces. There are 118 total parts and there are 62 different parts contained in this model. Every one is complete. Subassemblies are complete and we're going to go through the brief assembly of it and show you exactly what it looks like when it's done and I can promise you that it's going to be worth sticking around for. Hit that subscribe button if you have a smile on your face anytime during this video. That's a great way to say thanks and hey you can always come back and unsubscribe if you just change your mind. But hey it's almost Christmas. Hit that subscribe button. Help this channel to grow. Let's get to it. This is the pile of parts that we're going to be starting with. Some sub assemblies as I mentioned are complete. And no sense in revisiting the past. The cross slide has internal bevel gears that are not visible at assembly. And both ends of the shaft going through the center, the main elevator shaft, have been bushed with Delrin bushings. You can see one there at the end. The table is about 30 millimeter square, about an inch and a quarter square. Little brass T-nuts. And the upper ram. Door with the brass hinges. Functional lock. We're going to put the internal gear on first and you can see on either end of the cone pulley there are also Delrin bushings. Any place there's rotating metal to metal surfaces there are friction washers to uh, avoid any type of wear even inside. With the internal gears complete, it's time to put the table assembly on. This simply rides on the front vertical rails and is secured in place with six cap screws once the elevator mechanism is installed. The elevator screw itself is the last thing to be secured with the table all the way down to help with the alignment. We'll put the two screws in from the bottom. And to give you some idea how tiny these screws are, I decided to show you. That's the kind of screw if you drop it, you don't even hear it hit the floor. Screws are installed from the bottom. And two will do the job. The adjustment screw for the ram casting is next. And this is the crank lever. You can see the articulation of the little connecting link on the top. In order to do this, it's got to be installed through the front shifted into position and then pushed towards the rear. That's also in the footnotes on the print for anybody that's building this and can't figure out how to get that screw in that little spot. The screw is held in place and the clearance is set with the collar on the back. Now every place on this model where a set screw hits a revolving shaft, there's a flat. So the screw doesn't damage the shaft. Crank arms dropped in through the top and the ram is secured with two side rails, five screws each. Taking a look through the side door, you can see the main gear inside with three different tapped holes in it. The closer to the center you get, the 
shorter the stroke is as that gear revolves. You're going to see it jump around here for a second. It does not normally jump around like that until that bottom axis pin is installed. And yes, there will be a bushing on either side of the crank arm inside this casting. Very difficult to get into position, but well worth it. Properly installed, that's what you got. And this is the table. These T-nuts are just too small and the screws are too small and it's too fussy to do. So we're going to do it this way. I'm going to unloosen the screws and line up the T-nuts and just line them up with the tip of a screwdriver and let them fall into place one at a time. And the best camera angle here is also line of sight, so forgive the back of my hand. That's almost impossible to avoid. These T-nuts are three millimeters across with a 172 thread. That is a number one. That's about 74 thousandths across. Line everything up, secure the screws. The locking handle for the ram adjustment screw is next. And of course the clapper block and the tool slide. Little test fit. So far so good. This is the advanced mechanism. This is the small eccentric mechanism that uh, retracts or advances the table as the tool retracts. Now for everybody that's going to look to see if it's adjusted correctly, I can assure you that at this point in time it is not. The table is supposed to advance as the tool retracts and everything has to be assembled and visually checked before any adjustments can be made. Fussy little assembly. Very sensitive. And the rod is so long because this particular rod needs to be adjusted each time the table is elevated or dropped it has to be able to reach through the entire range of motion. And this is the little crank that raises the table. Up it goes. Hinge pins are installed on the door. It is a 1.5 millimeter diameter pin, about a 60 thousandths. And yes, the doorknob does work. There's a cam on the inside. This is the little vise that I did for the drill press table. And since I only have one, I moved it from the drill press over to the shaper for this build. And a quick test of some of the functions. The vise opens, the handle's clear. This is the stroke adjustment screw for the ram. Table moves back and forth. Table moves up and down. The eccentric on the inside works. The ram adjustment works. Doors open, cam moves, everything is clean. 
Now let's secure the cam on the side, get a little bit closer to being correct. And we'll cycle that at the end and show you exactly how that works. Well, there you have it, guys. That is the PM Research Shaper Kit. This is a machine from the 1800s. And I got to tell you, I had a blast doing this. These studs on the bottom are 540. They are about three millimeter studs and they are just to mimic the machine being bolted to a solid surface. Studs coming up through the concrete and big heavy hex nuts holding it down. When I mount this, I will actually use cap screws coming in from the bottom and put those uh, flange nuts back on there. And it'll look exactly the same, only it will be secured for now. It's just cosmetic functional vice this was from the drill press and my planets must have lined up because the center to center on that little vice is exactly spot on for the table i am extremely happy about that the linkage on the outside here will have to be timed i am not uh, up on the camming and the timing i know it has to retract or advance the table on the retract i'll figure out how to do that that is not something i've ever done i'm going to enjoy figuring it out And we'll see if we can line this up next to the other machines to give you some idea of the scale. The ram stroke is adjustable. How far out it sticks is adjustable. The length of the stroke is adjustable. The height of the tool here is adjustable. The rotation is adjustable. The apron and the table are adjustable. The vise is adjustable in and out. This moves left and right. This moves up and down, and I just couldn't be happier. I am actually uh, <laughs> winded right now looking at this thing. This is truly a, a, a nice piece. I'm really pleased with that. Well, that's it, guys. That is the assembly video. I hope you like what you see. Stick around for some still shots and some walk-arounds. Thank you very much for all the time you spent. This is the culmination of 25 videos, almost 500 individual video segments, and about three and a half months, so about 12 hours a week. So anybody out there own a Toyota dealership and want to trade me for a new Tundra, come and get it. I'll be happy to make another one. Actually, no, one of one, JP Signature Series. Thank you very much for tuning in. I am just, I got to go. This was it. This is fantastic. What a great day for me. Wherever you are in the world, I hope you're well and happy and safe. I know I'm smiling. I hope you are too. This is Joe Pye at Advanced Innovations in Austin, Texas. I'm out.